Hey guys, this is Corey from Podfly, and today we're going to be taking a look at really the gold standard of audio editing software used both in professional podcasting and broadcasting alike, Adobe Audition. You might have heard a lot of people speak about this DAW or Digital Audio Workstation. This is not free. Uh, this is definitely a program that you have to buy. What's really cool though is Audition has something called the Creative Cloud where now they're experimenting with a subscription model. So you can pay as low as $20 a month and have the latest copy of Adobe Audition on your machine up to two production machines, I believe. Uh, jumping into this software is going to be a little bit daunting at first, especially if you're coming from the world of Audacity or GarageBand. But once we get a couple of the basic functions down, you're going to see that this is really the way to go. So let's dive in. The first thing I really want to do today is just assemble a podcast. Uh, and then later down the road, we're going to be looking at doing some real fine editing within that audio. But today, let's just do the most basic functions and take some recorded audio and assemble it in a podcast in Adobe Audition to see how the workflow is. So here we are guys, I've opened up my copy of Adobe Audition, in this case on the Mac. This is both Mac and Windows compatible. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to set up the audio hardware so that I can record into this and play back my audio. Um, in this case, I happen to be using a USB interface with a condenser microphone plugged into it. And uh, my USB interface is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. A really great piece of gear. When we get into the advanced gear down the road, I'm going to be showing you that uh, piece of equipment. It's the one that we use here at Podfly pretty regularly. The first thing I need to do is go ahead and check my sound preferences to make sure that I have the right device going in and out of the program. On Mac, I go to Audition. In Windows, I go to File to find preferences. And then I can open up here my audio hardware. Then within this, I can see what my default input and output is going to be. In this case, I have it already selected as the Scarlet 2i2 USB. Uh, I switched it to the Soundflower if you want, or the display audio or built-in microphone. But in this case, I'm recording in with this USB interface, and then default output, I'm listening back. Uh, we don't want to get too in-depth here in changing the buffer size and sample rate, but we certainly will when we get into some of the more advanced functions of Adobe Audition. So let's go ahead with that. Now that I've got this ready to go, I want to open up a multi-track session to practice recording my voice a little bit into it. So the easiest way to do it here is to click on multi-track and I'll just create an untitled session on my desktop or of course I can name it whatever I like. Maybe I'll just call it test one and I'll leave the sample rate the same. We'll talk about this a little bit more when we're putting together our next podcast. But for now, leave everything as default and just click OK. You'll see what it's done here is opened up a multi-track session. And I'm going to try and record my voice here on track number one. The first thing I need to do is select my default input. In this case, it's one microphone, so mono will do. So I'm going to select mono, and then my Scarlet 2i2, and then my USB input one. Now, if you have, for example, a USB mic, like a Yeti or something plugged in, you'll see that Yeti is there, and that's the one that you'll go ahead and select. So I'll pick this particular mic. And then up in the track, I want to actually arm this track to record. By clicking on the R button, you see that it turns red like a record light would. And I have my meter going because my voice is coming in. To start the recording as I would in Audacity, I just hit record. And now I am recording my voice. Doesn't that sound amazing? And I've recorded my voice. Now I can go ahead and just click the home button. It takes me all the way back to the beginning and I can play back that audio. And now I am recording my voice. Doesn't that sound amazing? So now I can manipulate my audio, move it around, and do all kinds of great things as I normally would in a DAW, and we're going to look at that in a moment. But I just wanted to show you guys how to get your audio hardware set up so that you can record your tracks into Audition. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at a project file where we have all of the tracks pre-recorded, and we're going to bring them into this workspace in order to create our podcast. Okay, guys, let's put together a simple podcast here. I've got on my right-hand side a couple of the segments that we're going to go ahead and put into this project window. I've got an introduction, uh, an outro, a little bumper music we're going to use as a transition. 
Uh, in this particular case, the host has uh, recorded a teaser, uh, you know, about a one to three minute section uh, ahead of an interview to let people know what's going to be coming up. Then we've got this particular host recording an interview via Skype and uh, using a program such as Pamela or Ecamm Recorder. And we have those two split into host and guest. So we've got quite a few tracks to work with here. So let's go ahead and open up a project. One of the quickest ways to get a project going in a multi-track session, um, that is if you don't already have a template, is just go ahead and click on this quick link to multi-track. I can go ahead and create a session. I'll call this a test session, and I'll just put it right on my desktop so it's easy to find. And all the default presets are excellent. Uh, you can play around with that a little bit if you want. Again, for doing a spoken word podcast, working around 44 1 hertz, 32 bits, and in stereo is excellent. Of course, there are presets like podcast that you can choose as well that kind of lays out a workspace for you that might be typical to a podcaster but in this case just to show you some of the functionality within adobe audition i'm going to stick with the the blank template so clicking ok and it opens up a multi-track session so you can see here i have all of my tracks down the left i've got my media browser my effects rack and a whole bunch more so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to actually drag in some of the tracks that i want to work with and start laying them out a little bit so I have a general idea of what this project is going to look like. You can change the name of the track by clicking on it if you want. Uh, in this case, we'll call this one Beds. That's going to represent our intro, our outro, and our uh, bumper music. Here I'll have maybe the teaser section. And then track three I'll call Host. And track four can be the guest. This just keeps it easy. If you work with a lot of tracks, you can quickly get lost in your project. So this is a nice way to know where everything is. Uh, you can open things up through the media browser. You can look for them. But at the same time, it's just as easy to grab that file right off the desktop and go ahead and put it in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this file. Make sure that is the intro, of course. You always want to double check your audio. Welcome to Viva Tropical Radio, hosted by... Sounds good. That's the intro that I need. I'm going to start laying out the rest of my podcast. I'll drag that teaser section into the teaser track that I've created. It'll take a second just to upsample. Uh, I can go ahead and reduce this down a little bit. There's a couple ways that you can do this uh, action that I just completed in Adobe Audition. Here on a Mac, by holding the command, I can scroll up and down and that will zoom. Uh, if you're lucky enough to be using one of these magic mice, you can actually shuttle to the right and the left by dragging your finger across the mouse. Pretty cool. But there's other ways to do it as well. You can grab this project bar here and you can move the project around. By grabbing the edges of it as well, you can zoom into certain sections. And if you are old school, you can go down to the old magnifying glasses here and you can magnify and shrink down. But you'll find that having your left hand on that command or for Windows guys, the control key is great because it makes it easy to just move your project cursor, get in there and find those sections that you want to work on. I'm going to drag in my next couple of tracks here and again, continue to lay this out. Uh, what I want to do after my intro is I'm going to put a bumper in here. Now, we're not doing any fine editing. We're not moving anything to exactly where it needs to be. Just roughing it out right now so we have an idea what the whole project's going to look like when we're done. Here's my host file that I'm going to put on the host track. This is the one side of a Skype recording that's been done. And at the same time, I'm going to have the guest side running. But I'm not going to put that set at the end of the host track, of course, because this is the other side of a conversation. So I'm going to have the two running simultaneously. So I'm going to start those right around the same time. Of course, I'm going to be moving these down as I go along. And the last thing I'm going to want in the project window as these things are rendering at the end of it is going to be the outro. Put the outro here again on my beds track. So everything is on the same track. All the music is in the same place here. My teaser is on a separate track, so I can work with that individually. And then on individual tracks, I have my host and my guest. The reason why I did this is in this particular case, uh, I know that this host likes to work with um, a different program to record his voice for the teaser and then uses the call recorder here to record his side of the conversation. Now, if you go back to some of the earlier lessons that we have in place, I strongly recommend you guys don't necessarily do it this way. Uh, it is okay and we can work with it, but it always sounds better to have your microphone being recorded into a separate DAW like Audacity or Audition or, or anything really. 
Uh, and then the eCam recorder or Pamela recording the other side. Uh, that means that you have the best high quality audio for at least one of you being the host. Uh, later down the road, we're going to take a look at some fancy ways that uh, you both can be recording your side to create a double ended podcast. But in this case, this is the audio that we have to work with. And we're going to really use this to demonstrate some of the power of Adobe Audition to turn this into a great sounding podcast. Okay, my next step is I'm going to look at each of these individual tracks and see if there's anything I need to do with the audio to clean it up. Very rarely uh, when we're in this stage of an operation do we have just good raw audio coming in that we want to use. Uh, we want to manipulate it and process it a little bit. Maybe add some compression, there might be some noise, a little equalization. So I'm going to go through some of that here today. I'm only going to look at some of the most basic functions within Adobe Audition because, you know, again, this is a very sophisticated piece of software and there's a great number of things that we can do with this audio. And we'll be looking at it down the road in future specializations, you know, mastering secrets of the pros and refined editing in Audition. But for today, let's show you some of the basic functions so you guys can get rolling. Here I'm going to double click on this teaser file that I've got open so I can look at it a little more in depth. This opens up two panes that are super, super powerful. The top being the more traditional waveform that you see, that linear representation of an audio signal from left to right. But down at the bottom, we see a spectral analysis of the audio. This particular spectrum display is where a lot of the power comes in in Audition. Using the same key commands, I can go ahead and zoom in a little bit and take a closer look at the audio. At the beginning, of course, I have this section of audio that's been recorded asking a, a host and this is again what we recommend you guys do, record a little bit of the room before you actually start your recording. And the reason being is that this gives us an opportunity to listen to what is the background noise happening in your studio environment, whether it be a computer fan, uh, traffic going by, um, you know, there's a lot of things and ambient noises that we may not be aware of because we, we condition ourselves in that situation to get accustomed to them. However, as an audio engineer, uh, listening to what your microphone is picking up, um, suddenly we become hyper aware of those sounds around here. And those sounds are ones that we can eliminate and work with and manipulate within our audio. So recording that first section of maybe about five seconds of audio before you start your recording is really, really valuable in this post-production stage. I'm just going to listen to this audio right now and see if there's anything immediately that's jumping out at me. Welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. I am in Marrakesh, Morocco right now, and I just got back from a walk around the Medina. Everything sounds really good here. Uh, there's not a lot of background noise going on. I'm very pleased with this signal. The only thing I can see is that just looking at this top waveform, maybe I could have it just be a little bit louder. A quick way to do that is great. I can grab onto this particular amplitude adjustment. Uh, that basically just raises the volume in this little heads up display. It's kind of cool because I can move this display around and get it in and out of my way. But I can change and manipulate the audio so that I'm going to have a little bit louder signal. I'm going to boost this by about 2.4 decibels. And I'm only doing it visually. I'm looking to see if I can get this form up to around that negative 3 dB mark that you see represented on the right hand side here. And it goes on and it makes that change and now it's boosted that signal. I can go back to my multi-track section now and you can see if you recall that this now has been boosted, uh, so it does have a nice loud volume coming out. There's something else that I would love to do with this signal, and I'm going to go to the effects rack in Audition here. This is one of the most powerful tools of Adobe Audition. They have built into the software really great plugins and effects. Uh, these are things that we're going to apply to that signal to make it sound different, basically manipulate the audio. In this case, going to my effects rack, one thing that I like to use a lot here is compression. Uh, compression basically takes an audio signal, raises the lowest volume and lowers the highest volume. So everything tends to come out at relatively the same volume. Uh, this is really good because especially when you're listening to audio, uh, whether it be on television, in a movie, in a podcast, on radio, having it all come out at relatively the same level means that it can really get out front, grab the attention of the listener, uh, and get ahead of all of the other ambient noise that you have going on in your life. Think about a podcaster who has, you know, headphones on and is on the bus or, or walking down the street or in the gym or anywhere, really. There's a lot of other noise that's going on around. We want to get in front of that noise, and compression is a great way to do it. Clicking on this little arrow here, I'm going to open up the effects rack, and I've got amplitude and compression. 
I'm going to go to the multiband compressor. This is really one of the most powerful ones because it analyzes various aspects of the signal uh, and then does individual compressions on different parts of the bandwidth. Uh, not to get too technical, let's just say that it's really, really great. The default in many of these is excellent. Uh, I do recommend that you always start there and go ahead and listen to it. By hitting the space bar or pressing play, I can listen to how this has changed the signal. Really, it means the Arab quarter of a, of a place. Notice that I can toggle this off. So geographic locations, uh, often in and northern on. Africa. And if you have never been to a Medina, they are very fascinating. Not so you can see how this really boosts that signal up and brings it up and more present uh, to the listener. So this is a great effect immediately. If you really want to boost that signal, there are presets built in. Broadcast is used for broadcast media and radio as well if you want that really big fat radio voice. But in this case, the default setting sounds really good to me, so I'm going to just stick with that. As we go into specializations, we'll be looking deeper into some of the functions here so that you can really manipulate that compression. And then eventually you can save it as your favorite compressor for a particular host or guest or setting that you have. Uh, once you get your own signal ready to go and you're comfortable with your environment, you can create those special presets that are special to you. Uh, and then every time you open up your templates and your projects to do each of your episodes, you can apply the exact same effects with just one click. So it's really, really convenient. In this case, I'm going to leave the default on just for demonstration purposes. Okay, next up I want to deal with some of the audio here that I see in the host and guest track. And I'm going to do these each individually. There's a couple things that you can do in Audition like many other DAWs that uh, can be handy for you. When I look at each of these individual tracks, I have an M which represents mute, which means I can silence that track. S stands for solo, and that means that only this track will play. And of course R means record. In some cases, when I'm working on audio that is stacked on top of each other like this, I want to solo that audio so I don't hear the guest track. I'm only going to be focusing on the host track. In this case, however, I'm going to just go ahead and open up this in our editor by double-clicking on the host file. And I've got it all opened up here. I can see that I've got in the bottom pane, where I'm looking at the spectral analyzer, a lot of black. This is good. Black means there's no noise going on. Uh, where you see these little peaks, that means that this is where the guy is speaking. So I'm going to just kind of zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole picture. And I'm just going to do a preliminary play to see what it sounds like. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you being here today. Issue number one that I'm seeing is that this is quite low. You can see it in a visual representation that everything seems to be down below this negative 15 dB mark, which is too quiet. Uh, as well, when I play it, when I follow the meters down here, I see it's dancing around that negative 18 mark. So I guess the first question, is, oh, of course. We want our audio to get up to about negative 6 to negative 3. Somewhere in that area uh, is, is the great range that we're shooting for. The quick way we can do that, of course, is I can grab onto my amplitude tool here and just drag this up to get that audio up to about that negative 3D mark. This is going to make it a lot easier for me to start working with uh, right out of the gate. It takes a second to make that process. This is destructive editing, and that means that it's actually changing the file. I'm going to go back to my multi-track. Sometimes you might want to do a copy of each of the files and put them in a separate folder so you have kind of original files on standby at any given time. Um, but in this case, you know, I don't mind doing that destructive editing because, you know, I have a lot of undos available to me and you know I know exactly what I'm doing but there are instances where you might want to as you're getting comfortable with the program just start a little project folder on the side that's the original files put it on a separate hard drive keep it all nice safe and sound uh, and then you can start working on these without worrying about whether or not you're destroying all the original audio I'm gonna solo this track now and listen through it here in the multi-track player hey Brian welcome to the show I appreciate you being here today I can see now right away I've got a pretty good signal coming in, but I want to apply the same effect that I did to the teaser, that multi-band compressor, to see if it's going to help me boost that signal a little bit and even things out. So go to Amplitude and Compression, go to Multi-Band Compressor, and let's have a listen. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you being here today. So I guess the first... Sounds good to me. I'm very pleased with that. Now let's take a look at the next channel. I'm going to unsolo that. 
and I'm going to double click on the guest side and open it up in my project window. Let's have a listen here to what the guest side is sounding like. This will be the recording done by either Pamela or Ecamm Recorder or maybe another program uh, that is the signal as sent by Skype. Let's have a listen. Well, it is. It was. It was a great industry. Um, how I got started was I uh, when I was in. This sounds pretty good. Skype does a couple of things uh, that we love and we hate in the audio industry. Um, one of the things that we do love is that it does the compression sort of for you. Uh, if you look at this particular wave here, you can see that everything is nice and even because Skype has already compressed that. The reason being is they want to make it easy to deliver back and forth on the internet and sound good coming through your system and a couple of other things. Uh, one of the things that we don't like about Skype is it doesn't necessarily sound great. However, it's thousands of times better than a telephone uh, and you kind of get what you pay for as Skype is free. So right now I'm looking at these two signals. I'm going to line them up, the guest and the host, just as they came in because we do want them to start simultaneously and just have a listen to how they balance out. Hey, Brian, welcome to the show. I appreciate you being here today. Hi, Josh. So I guess the first question is... having me. Oh, of course. Uh, okay, everything seems to be balancing out nicely. We're going to take a look at some of those stumbles that happened at the beginning. I'm going to show you how to clean them up and make them work. Um, but the next thing I want to do really now is take this project and start laying it out and doing some finer editing, some repositioning of uh, different elements of it uh, so that I have something that's a more complete project. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. One of the keyboard commands that I use very frequently is just hitting the home button. And that takes my cursor all the way back to the start of the project. I can go ahead and then zoom in, hitting home again. It takes me right all the way to the beginning of the intro. Remember, I can grab that little toolbar if I want and I can move it over. So what I want to now do is, is find a place where the teaser is going to come in uh, after the intro has all finished up. You can see here, even just in the visual representation of the introduction, that there's a fade out on the music. So just visually, I'm going to start lining these up right away and then go back and listen and see how they worked out. I'm going to go maybe a little bit towards the end of the intro and see how this is. Way. Break free and thrive. Welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. I am in Marrakesh, Morocco right now. I did not get lucky. I am super experienced. So I happened to get that in a really nice place where it naturally falls afterwards. The levels seem to match up quite well too. So I'm super pleased about all of that. I'm going to go to the end of the teaser. I'm not going to listen all the way through it. Of course, you will probably do that to see if you want to get any ums and ahs out and make any finer edits, uh, which again, we'll be looking at in future specializations. But for now, I'm just demonstrating how to kind of lay out an entire podcast uh, in audition. I've got at the end of this a bumper. Um, this bumper is a little piece of music that we use in podcasting uh, in order to make a transition from one section to another. Uh, this bumper is comprised of the same background or bed music that is used in the introduction. So we can have a listen to that real quick. Immediately, it's a lot louder than most of the project. I want you to notice that I grabbed onto this yellow bar in the middle of it. Because what I can do is right within this file is I can reduce the volume very, very easily. I'm going to bring it down about five, five and a half dB. Just have a listen to see how it compares to the audio of the teaser in level. I can always watch this meter down here if I don't trust my ears to see if they're getting close to the same level. Fun interview. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy it too. And without further ado, let's talk to Brian. Not bad. That matches up pretty well. Now I want to position this so that it comes in right at the end of his word. Um, so it's really snappy and really poppy. I'm actually going to go ahead and bring that volume down just a little bit more. And the next thing I want to do is this has a natural fade on it, but you'll notice this file is fairly long. Um, this looks like it's about 30 seconds in length and I don't want it to be that long. I do want to fade it out and go into the next section of the interview. So First thing I'll do is I'll make sure I've got this lined up where I want it to be and I'll show you how to do a cool fade. Let's talk to Brian. Okay, a little soon for my taste. So I'm just going to grab that just by holding onto it, nudge it over a little bit and see how that works out. Timing is kind of everything. You get a look and feel, you kind of get a, a good eye for it as you continue to work in the program. But um, really, it's your ears ultimately they are going to tell the tale. 
One thing we recommend you do in audio editing, this is a great trick that a lot of people don't tell you, um, especially the podcast editors, and this comes from the recording studios, is be very careful when you're watching the audio go by. It used to be in the old days, we would watch the meters dance on a mixing desk and we would be grabbing faders and we would forget to use our ears. We'd be too visual. Uh, and then later down the road, we'd listen to our mixes and realize, oh man, you know, this sounds terrible. This is too loud. This is too quiet. And it's because we were using visual cues as opposed to using the audio cues, which is ultimately what the product is going to be. Um, so in these cases, when you're looking for something to line up and be a good level and sound right, uh, don't be afraid to just go ahead, press play, and close your eyes. I hope you guys enjoy it too. And without further ado, let's talk to Brian. That for me is sweet perfection. That's exactly where I want that little guy to be. Now I'm going to grab one of my favorite things in Adobe Audition, uh, and it's the quick fade box here. This is super cool. You just grab onto it, drag it to the left, and I can do an arcing fade. I can do a straight line. I can do any kind of shape that I want on this linear value. And uh, it is amazing. You know, in audacity, I can say right now, I really don't enjoy working much with that program because you go in and you have to put an effect on it and the effect has to be a fade and then you have to change it. Whereas in this case, it's just so intuitive and you can see what that fade's gonna look like. So let's try it out. Dr. Brian. That's exactly what gets guys like me excited. I'm going to drag in now the interview, just bring it over and find a good place for this little guy to start. So I've got again here where his teaser ends, the bumper music comes in and I don't want to wait too long before I get into this interview. So I'm going to drag it on over and pretty much jump in right away. Let's have a listen to how this lines up. Enjoy it too. And without further ado, let's talk to Brian. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the show. I appreciate it. Maybe a bit too soon. Again, this is personal taste. I'm just moving it over a little bit. Let's give it a listen. And without further ado, let's talk to Brian. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the show. I appreciate it. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm very happy with that. One thing you want to do very frequently, um, especially the Windows users, is during these projects, get very comfortable with saving as you go. Uh, when you've done a lot of work and you've got some edits that you're happy with and you've got that kind of, here's a trick, by the way, a little tip that we use in studios as well. When you've got that happy feeling inside, control S, uh, Mac users, command S. So command S basically is going to go ahead and just save this project uh, exactly as it is. In many cases, you want to just keep on doing this. The first save is going to be a little bit longer because it's rendering files and saving special project files. The second one, notice as I click Control or Command S right now, it's going to be fast. And that's it. That is saving your work as you go. I mean, a lot of these do have auto saves going on in the background and ways to recover your files. But look, there's just nothing worse than spending you know, 30, 40 minutes to getting something just exactly the way you want it. And, uh, you know, you get the blue screen of death or you get the Mac beach ball and you're kind of screwed. Um, and then you have to go back and do it all over again. Believe me, you keeping your thumb on that control or command button and uh, having S right there at the ready is going to help you guys out a lot. Okay, we've got things lined up. We got things starting where we want them to start. Um, but there's something that I noticed when I was doing the initial listens to the host and guest track. Uh, at the beginning, there was some stumbling and stepping on each other. This is very natural in Skype when you start getting into a conversation with your guest. Uh, you get used to the latency or the time or delay between yourself and the guest. Uh, and you start getting your rhythm going. If you have the opportunity, if you're lucky enough, I strongly recommend that you try and do a little preamble with the guest, a little back and forth to warm up, uh, understand how the Skype signal is working for you guys, uh, and kind of get that rhythm before you jump in. In some cases, of course, we don't have time. You know, the guest is on a schedule and we have to just go ahead and start right away. Um, but in these cases, there are things that we can do to edit it to make it sound a lot snappier. So let's take a listen through and try and identify a couple of those areas that I want to attack at the beginning of this interview. Talk to Brian. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you being here today. Hi, Josh. So I guess the first question... Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Um, the first question I had was... Okay, there's a couple things I want to get rid of right away. I'm going to go up here 
and I'm going to grab my time selection tool. Some people like to call it the I bar. And I noticed here that he said, hi, Josh. And then, you know, the host started speaking again and then he stepped on him and then he stepped on him again. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and I'm just going to select this portion of the audio and just hit the delete key. And that's going to get rid of that. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Get rid of this section. It's not really necessary. Let me show you why. Now, by clicking on V or going back up to my move tool, I can then grab these guys and I can move them around. So you see how immediately what I'm doing is I'm tightening these areas up. Notice when I hover over the end of each of these different files, I get that little beam or that bar. I can use that to grab and just eliminate that audio. So it's a really quick way to get rid of different portions of it. So I'm cinching this all up nice and tight. So I have little separate tracks, little different parts that I can move around and start making this sound into something that's a lot more natural. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, take a peek at what I'm up to. Notice that I didn't move my host. This is where I decided I want this interview to start. I'm going to push that guest right close. Skype is never going to give you that immediate response back and forth that you can have almost like natural conversation. This is a little dirty secret of podcasting for those that have it on separate tracks. If you really want to get in there, you can do this with each of the different sections of your guest and your host and really make it snappier. Let's take a peek and see what I've done here. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you being here today. Hi, Josh. Um, the first question I have... Sounds great. The one thing I don't like is uh, the um here. Um, the first... So you see, this part here is the um, and this is where the starts. So let's take a listen again so I can show you. Um, the first question I... Super easy. Grab onto the end of this little guy here. Drag it over. And then this is the power of that fade tool. Grab that fade tool and you fade into the the. Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, and I'm going to drag that right over. Now have a listen to what we've done. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you being here today. Hi, Josh. The first question I had... Wow. Okay, now that is snappy. That immediately sounds like these guys are about to get into something good. I can do the exact same thing with all of this if I really want to. I can go ahead and snip all of these up and start cinching them together so that the interview and the interviewer rather and the guest are right tight together and it sounds like they're in the room. So it makes it really, really easy to listen to. Here's another little trick that I'm going to give you right out of the gate uh, that a lot of people don't know happens in radio and podcasting. I've zoomed out all the way to my project so I can zoom into the end of each of these files. Now, notice when I hover over the top right hand corner of each of these files, I get a little stopwatch or a clock. This is a time stretching tool. This is amazing. I can go ahead and grab it and drag it to the left. And what I'm doing is I'm compressing the amount of time that this occurs in. I'm going to go all the way down to 97% on each of these. And basically what it means is that the exact same audio is going to come out only in 97% of the time. What the effect is, is you sound like you're a lot quicker and a lot snappier and everything's moving by really well. So it really helps your guests sound a little bit smarter, believe it or not. And also as a listener, it's very well known in the radio business that audio that's going by just a little bit quicker tends to grab the attention of the listener more. Now, this is not something that is noticeable. There's no chipmunks record going on here. This is something that's just a little nudge of the speed of it uh, in order to make it snappier and poppier and get up into the face of the listener more. I mentioned that we can get into these tracks a little bit further and start moving and manipulating some of the audio. I'm going to give you a little quick tip um, but I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm going to save a lot of that stuff for the advanced editing down the road. I'm going to zoom into a section here. But you notice that in this part, the host is not speaking for a large portion of time. This is where the guest is speaking. Uh, have your finger on that R button because what you do is you can open up a razor tool. You can, of course, grab it up here in the toolbar if you like. And then clicking on that. And the reason why it's a razor is, again, some of the old school guys who did audio editing, what we used to literally do is take tape and a razor blade on a table and splice the audio. So that's what the razor represents here. I'm going to go back to my V, which is again my move tool. And I can grab this and look how quickly I can just eliminate all of this dead space in here. The reason why I'm doing that is so I can zoom into a section and I can pop the host right perfectly in between the guest's words so that it's got that nice back and forth, back and forth. Um, and oh my God, it was. Let's go a little bit closer job and uh it was so nuts. when you landed there was people there to meet you i mean 
So it's really a great way. You can go in there if you want, and you can you know use your razor blade. You can slice and dice, and you can move each of these sections around. It really helps when you're in that interview mode as well to kind of keep your mouth shut. Uh, this is something we're going to talk about in interview skills down the road. Um, in a natural conversation, we do a lot of uh-huh, yeah, oh, for sure, and we agree with it. And that's great in polite society, but it's terrible for podcasting. We really want question, answer, question, answer. Uh, and you notice that good audio when you start listening to it and a good podcast that you're listening to has exactly that, you know, a question or a retort and then a response and that back and forth. But it's a clean back and forth. The uh, the little stuff that happens in between is simply audio that we need to deal with. Uh, and especially in Skype can step on the other guy very quickly. So we'll look at that down the road in interview skills. Last thing I want to do with this particular project is I want to put my outro at the end. So I want to go to the end of my interview here and have a listen to what's happening before I decide where to place that outro music. Book, read it, help my publishers out because they gave me a lot of money to write it. I want them to get their money. Absolutely. I, I think that if this podcast is any indication, that book must be fantastic. And I Okay, I can see a couple things I'm going to clean up right away. Um, the intro and the outro are extremely important, or at least the first and last portion of an interview, especially you see here, there's a call to action happening. We don't want to screw that up. I'm using my razor blade to go ahead and cut this up a little bit. And there's a part here, I'm just going to move this out of my way to hear it, uh, where the guest is about to say something, doesn't really finish it, and the host kind of jumps in, but there's a way we can make this work. They gave me a lot of money to write it. I want them to get their money back. So that's pretty much useless audio there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just eliminate that. Though he did say something that might be interesting and might be valuable. That is a judgment call when you are doing your editing. Uh, in this case, the audio quality was not good enough. And there's a big space and it kind of made it awkward. I'm going to drag the host over really close. and You can listen to what we've put together here. Um, yeah. Because they gave me a lot of money to write it. Absolutely. I, I think that if this podcast is... So I think that's a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and just cinch this up a bit. Move the guest over to the end of what the host just said. Too. Good luck with that project. Josh, thanks, man. It's been absolutely... So fantastic. This is a nice little tight ending. And again, we can go through the entire file if we want to and do all of this manipulation to make the entire interview that quick, that snappy. And uh, don't kid yourself. This is very, very common. A lot of uh, podcasters do this. Because remember, you know, you record it once, you edit it once, and it sits there forever. The better that it is now, the better it's going to sound three years from now when somebody's listening to it again. Um, but I digress. Let's take a look here at the last little part. And it's, uh, it's fun. Yeah. Thanks, Brian, for joining us. I had a great time, and I really appreciate you taking the time. Mil gracias y hasta luego, Josh. Hasta luego. Okay, so we'll notice here that there are uh, there's this huge space, and again, this is that Skype delay that's going on. Uh, we're just going to eliminate that. I don't really know, and, and again, this is a judgment call because it's your podcast. The host says hasta luego at the end. Um, it's quiet. It's not really necessary. I want something a little snappier, so I'm going to just click on it and delete it, and it's gone. Do a little fade at the end of this one, and I'm going to slice into the guest a little bit. And I'm going to move his hasta luego because I thought it was kind of cute uh, right here so that it almost steps on the other. And it's, uh, it's fun. Yeah. Thanks, Brian, for joining us. I had a great time and I really appreciate you taking the Mil time. gracias. Okay, a little too early. That's okay. I can just move it right on over. Appreciate you taking the time. Mil gracias y hasta luego, Josh. Boom. That's exactly where I want the outro to kick in. And I'm going to move that over to line up. And expanding out or zooming in, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and just bring this nice and close. And let's have a listen. Taking the time. Mil gracias y hasta luego, Josh. Thanks for listening. If you like this. Boom. That's how we do it. And it sounds amazing to me. Again, there's a lot more I can do with this audio. I can do a lot more noise reduction. I can do a little bit of equalization to, to make things sound a little bassier in some of the guys' voices. Um, but we're going to save all of those little juicy nuggets for you down the road in advanced editing. The next step for us here in this is to double check our edits and then make this an MP3 that we can distribute on the Internet.
Okay, guys, last step here in the process is I'm going to now take this and mix it all down into a single file. This is as easy as going up to File and Export. And then I'm going to do a multi-track mix down. This is going to be the entire session. You notice that it's grayed out selected clips. It's kind of cool. We'll look at this in advanced editing that you can highlight a couple clips and just make that a little session you export and more. But for now, we're just going to take the whole podcast, mix it down and get it ready to distribute. So I'm going to click on entire session, opens up a window, gives me some options, uh, how I want to create the file and what type of file, all kinds of things. I can title it whatever I want. Of course, I can title it after the fact where I'm going to store it. Most importantly for you guys is the format. In this case, we want it to be MP3. Uh, don't let anybody tell you any different. MP3 is really still the king of audio for distribution on the internet. Works with all the players, works on everybody's computer. Uh, it still makes a nice file size. Um, so I wouldn't muddle around with that because you might find that, uh, you know, certain flash players out there end up not being able to play it. Um, it's too big for people to download. I, I really wouldn't mess around with this a great deal. The default 44.1 sample type is fine. Same idea here. The format settings is something you might want to play around with a little bit, depending if you're sensitive on your file size. The reason why I mention that is, you know, services like Buzzsprout or Libsyn or others, they really base their pricing on the amount of megabytes that you upload to their server every month. So when you're doing your calculations for how big your show is going to be and how frequently you're going to upload that show, this is a consideration. In this particular case, I'm going to stick with 128 kilobits. Uh, this is a really nice sounding audio. Um, you know, it's a good rendering that uh, people can listen to easily and it's, it's a pretty common uh, format. However, if you're doing spoken word and you've got a really large file, but you don't want it to be too big, you can go ahead and change that. And you can go down to like 96 kilobits. It's going to make a smaller file size. Uh, the difference is almost inaudible. Um, but there's no reason to go up to some of these higher resolutions that we really reserve for music distribution. You know, if you buy something that's uncompressed, that's a big file. And uh, for spoken word, it really makes no difference. For the majority of people, they're not going to hear a difference at all, especially for those that are listening on, you know, little Apple earbuds or on the computer systems or what have you. Uh, it's it's really not relevant. Do leave this as a constant uh, bit rate, not a variable bit rate. That does actually make a difference in the audio quality. But, you know, Audition, like with many of the things, has already as default what you kind of want it to be. So I'm okay with that. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to take a minute, depending on the file size. You know, in this case, uh, you know, we've got a pretty complicated multi-track session. Nothing too crazy, but it looks like it's going to take about 10 minutes. I have a super fast processor and everything. So some of these cases might be, you know, 9, 10, 20 minutes even uh, to render down or mix down this enormous file. Others, not so much. A very simple podcast can be done in about two minutes. But uh, this is kind of go get some popcorn and a coffee and uh, come on back and we'll listen to the MV3. So we've mixed this down into a single MP3 file and we can go ahead and uh, manipulate the ID3 tags and uh, do some album art and get it all ready to put on the internet. But now that I've taken the time and I've put this first podcast together, I can save myself a heck of a lot of work down the road um, because, you know, I know that this is going to be the same mic set up here and I'm going to probably use the same sound settings uh, and a lot of these you know, shows are going to be constructed the same way. So why not use this as an opportunity to create a template uh, and save us many, many steps down the road? Um, right now, I'm looking at this and I can see that the teaser or the intro tends to be about the same length for most people's podcasts. So I'm going to put my cursor there and I'm going to press M. And this is going to create a little marker. This is great because I can go ahead now and have a marker in place that is going to enable me to next time know roughly where that teaser is going to end. Uh, and the same idea maybe is I can put different markers here at the outro because I don't want my podcast to be too long, just maybe as a reminder to try and keep it under an hour, that sort of thing. The next thing I can do now is I can go ahead and just highlight and delete this audio. And don't panic because, again, we don't really need this anymore. We're about to save this as a different project. I'm going to go up here to File, but don't click Save because that's going to just destroy the work that you did. You want to actually go save as, and like any other file, I can call this my show template and go ahead and just save that. So that now every time I open up Audition to work on my podcast, I just open up show template. 
I drag in my new files, and then I save as whatever the name of the show is. So it saves me a lot of time. That means my intro is already preloaded at the beginning. I've got a marker indicating why this is here because that's my little bumper. And then I can put, again, the teaser on the same track, use the same compressor. A consistency in audio and consistency in how you edit it is something that your listeners are maybe not looking for specifically, but subconsciously they're aware when there are changes. So when things are consistent and uniform in your editing process, it helps a lot. Not to mention in your workflow, it's going to save you tons and tons of time every time you open up your podcast and start working on the editing. Well, that's Adobe Audition in a nutshell. Again, the complexity of this program is, uh, is quite incredible, frankly. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with it. The more you get familiar with this program, the better. If you're using something like Audacity or GarageBand uh, or a little simpler program right now to be working with your podcast, you don't need to make the leap over into Adobe Audition right away. You can simply use Audition sort of on the side. You know, keep your normal workflow, finish your podcasts as you do, and in your spare time, I would recommend trying to do the same podcast in Adobe Audition so you get a little bit more familiar with it. Uh, and don't forget, we have a lot more specializations coming up that are going to be using Audition and really just teach you the tools that you guys need to know. But uh, there's a lot more depth to this DAW than meets the eye. And there's a reason why it is the gold standard uh, for podcasters and broadcasters alike. Thanks a lot for joining me today, guys. And uh, don't forget, show notes and more can be found over at podflyacademy.com.